Hi, I'm Moni Hill. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, and I am a painter. I use acrylic paint, and I paint mostly on wood. Today I'm going to show you how I go from these salvaged pieces of scrap wood to my final versions. I live in a, an area of town called Malvern Hills in Asheville, North Carolina, and it's a nice residential neighborhood, but um, somehow there was a lot across the street that is being built on right now, and though we hate the construction and the noise and the traffic, the silver lining was a dumpster full of scrap wood from ho the house being built. So my husband and I loaded up the dump truck after asking for permission, and we have now a garage full of scrap wood, and that's usually um, what my garage looks like. So half of it is the minivan and half of it is scrap wood. Um, I also have some nice carpenter friends who bring pieces over because they know I paint on you know, this kind of wood. So um, it starts off by my husband using a circle saw, a circular saw, yeah, to cut the pieces. He used to actually saw them by hand and that took so much time so I invested in a nice circular saw and I get these great pieces in no time. And I just like to smooth out the edges with sandpaper. And I don't go for perfection. I like to keep these little, um, sometimes the ridges in the wood because then they come out later in the final process when I sand. You can see the ridges sometimes come through. So nothing that I show you today is about um, perfection. I like to let character show through and wood definitely has character which is why I like to paint on wood. Um, this one was stepped on by a dog I guess but I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna paint right over it and I can sand it off. Uh, perfection also takes too much time. And I have two kids, I, I cook, I'm also a swim coach, and I cannot wait to get into the studio. This part is a labor of love. It's not my favorite part, but it allows me to create these surfaces where I can start putting color. I mean, I'm already excited about getting color on this. So when you paint on scrap wood like that, there is a little bit more preparation. I'm going to show you how to paint on Joe's Prime these cradled painting panels, which I adore. I love, it comes with this little frame and I don't have to sand it. I get to enjoy it right out of the package. I'll also show you how to paint on Joe's really good canvas. And then there's this also, Joe's makes this, um, it's, it's called artboard. I'm not even sure what it's made out of. It looks like a composite of, does it say? I don't know, but what I love about this is the little hooky place in the back. And it still allows me to really build up layers. So all three of these surfaces allow me to build up my layers of paint, which is um, where I have so much fun. All right, so we're gonna, um, I'm gonna tint the gesso because I really like layers of color so that when I go back and sand over it, these layers of color start coming through. So I'm going to use Joe's Prime really good clear gesso and just put it on the palette paper, which is made by Strathmore palette paper. If you don't have palette paper, I'll, I even will use the top of a, a paint lid. I'll use any flat surface to get my paint moving. And you'll, you're going to learn about me that I don't follow recipes. I don't, I'm not going to give measurements, but just let's have fun until things look the way you want them to look. Here I'm adding um, this Joe's Prime Light Fast Acrylic to the gesso to give it the color. And I want to get some red moving. So I use a gesso because it allows me to do one of my trademark, um, one of my signature pieces. It allows me to put canvas onto the 
wood and it adheres. The gesso has an adhesiveness to it. Sometimes to um, get my wood ready, I also use, I'll use a house paint. If I have a house paint with primer laying around, maybe if I painted a room in the house. Um, if the paint has a primer in it, it will also adhere the canvas to the wood. I started doing this years ago when I wanted to add some more dimension to my work and also you'll see how it evolves. Okay, so I've got a nice batch of red ready and I'm just going to start putting it on there. Look how, oh, it's so thick and yummy. And there goes the patch. And that's just going to dry and stick right on there. So the patch is um, scrap pieces of canvas from, you know, stretched canvases. There are often remnants, and so I just get those scraps and cut them up into little pieces. I believe in painting on the sides. A lot of artists and I go get into discussions about to paint on the sides or to not paint on the sides. I understand the other side's uh, point about not painting on the sides, that it, if it's a two-dimensional work, the emphasis should be on the painting itself and, it's, um, and not on the sides, but I know that I am creating an object. This is something you're going to place on your shelf to just uh, lift up your heart and warm your day as you're walking through the kitchen or wherever. So I really want you to see something pretty no matter where you look at it. So the sides of my paintings matter to me. I really, um, that's why I paint the sides. So I work in batches. I don't like to let wet paint go to, go to waste. I'll use up every little bit of wet paint, which is why, and I work in, um, I do my paint in small batches, my paintings in large batches. I'll usually have about 20 paintings going at a time. Um, and in order to not be bored, I will have different colors. I'll prime them and um, get them ready with different colors. Because just putting color onto things and watching the relationships between colors grow and evolve it excites me. It's one of my the favorite parts of my job. My work is so much about color, and this is where my work really, really, really starts to get fun. So let's pull out one of these, the Joe's Prime um, cradled painting panel. Look at how beautifully it goes on. It's so smooth. All right, so the brush I'm using is a white nylon made by Cheap Joe's, and I love the synthetic bristles. They're so soft. And I like using shorter bristled brushes. I feel like I have more control with it. And I really like to glob the paint on, but with a little bit of control. And the short bristles, it's just what I've become accustomed to, I guess. All right, so this is such a nice, smooth surface that I won't hesitate to go ahead and leave some of those brush marks showing underneath there because I like to give things depth. We'll put a small patch on that one. Just change things up a bit. So these are, are just the beginning. Here, I'll use a canvas now um, just to show you that you can, through paint, build layers and layers and turn any surface into a color extravaganza. <laughs> All right, so I'm running out. I'm going to use the rest on here. Put the patch on now. Yeah, I'm going to put a canvas patch on top of a canvas. What the heck? I've seen people put paper on canvas. Put down some more clear gesso. Mix in some more of the acrylic paint. Look at how fun that is. Why would anybody put down white gesso? <laughs> that doesn't happen in my house. Van Gogh style. Just 
that's a good way to get that off there. And yeah, I'll paint the sides of this canvas too. So I was influenced a lot by um, the Southern folk artists when I moved to Asheville. I really, before I moved to Asheville eight years ago, I studied art history and I would go to museums and I really loved the modern abstract expressionists. And I, I took art very seriously and I wanted to make serious art, but when I moved to Asheville and uh, learned about the southern folk artists that they just created things from whatever they had, you know, painting on roof tins or using whatever paint they had, whatever materials they had. That, I was very inspired by that and that freed me up to paint on surfaces like reclaimed wood. And there's not a lot of financial investment obviously in, in painting on reclaimed wood, so that freed me up to experiment a lot. And that's when my art really turned fun, bright, and colorful, was when I just felt that freedom in, from the materials to go ahead and try something new and have some fun. And I began to take art less seriously. And, or I, I took it seriously, but more, I was more serious about having fun with it. And maybe that comes from age. I don't know where it comes from. Anyway. So from the Southern folk artist, I just gained this real appreciation for the act of doing art and making pretty things from what you have around you. And so I, I wasn't picky about the things I used. I am picky about my final product and about how colors come together. The other thing, I was, I was painting while I had two young children um, and painting right in the dining room. I just had to paint. So, you know, if you're an artist, you get this. You got to paint when and wherever you can. A lot of times young moms say, I really want to start painting again, but I don't have the time. Well, I would put those kids to bed, go down to the dining room, you know, put the dishes away, and on the dining room wall, just start painting. And I think that there's a payback for that for the dedication and commitment to painting, you get this, you know, a lot of inspiration and motivation to keep going. It just takes that first step, making time in your life to paint. The art gods reward you. All right, so that's my first batch.